Hey there, I'm Brad Miller and here with Jason Medford today, and we're going to talk about tuning yourself, spiritual tuning. Um, so not like, you know, tuning yourself with, well, actually exactly like tuning yourself like a piano with a tuning fork, in fact. Um, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. yep, that, that's, that's one of the ways. That's exactly the thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I know in a, in a pre, actually, I think the last episode that we did, we talked a little bit about tuning yourself to different frequencies and to be able to kind of... Um, hear different things or communicate and things and whatever. And so um, I thought it might be kind of interesting to talk a little bit more about that today, um, how we can do that, what it means. Um, mm -hmm. We're talking about tuning. Yeah. Cause there's actually some pretty practical things. And, you know, if you've been on a spiritual path for a while, you've probably heard people talk about things like, you know, tuning yourself, uh, raising your frequency and vibration mm -hmm. and, I know when I first started hearing some of those terms, they were so kind of etherical to me. And it was like, well, I hear what you're saying, but I don't really know practically what that means. Uh, but today we'll we'll kind of talk through probably some practical things, give you some different analogies um, as well, because um, just like musical instruments, um, our, our physical bodies and our light bodies, we can tune as well. And there's different different ways to kind of do that too so yeah so where should we go first brad well um i guess kind of i, I like to kind of start at the you know kind of remembering that um thought goes to emotion to feeling feelings go to vibrations and vibrations go to frequency and it's all physics um everything vibrates at a certain rate has a certain frequency to it um because what frequency is it's the rate of vibration of something um and everything around you has a certain frequency um the pen here has a frequency um it's to the point i can't actually see it moving it's vibrating i can't tell that it is but it is um, because if you get down to the microscopic levels, if you look down to kind of the atomic level and beyond, you'll see that everything in there, everything in the little atoms that we're made out of, they're all moving. Everything's in there just kind of going crazy and spinning and whirring all kinds of stuff. Um, and so that, I mean, that, and everything you comes from us, from the pens, from the desks, everything that we've got, everything in this world is is vibrating to some extent. Um, and so kind of that I like, is like the base of what kind of we're talking about here when we talk about um, frequency. And I know we can talk about attracting and uh, repelling and that kind of stuff here in a bit. But um, yeah. And so there's, you know, we'll use some musical terms probably because that's it's an easy way to kind of mm -hmm. uh, remember it. And Brad has show and tell for this episode, too. So <laughs> keep that in your hand because we're going to we're going to get there. But yeah. Um, I think it's it's uh, you know yeah when you when you when you think about music, and so there's there's a, a a thing called sympathetic resonance, sympathetic resonance, right? Which is where uh, if if I had two tuning forks in my hands, uh, that um, I don't know where my tuning forks are right now. I got to find them after I moved. But let's say I have two two uh, uh, tuning forks in my hand. If I if I hit the one tuning fork, it'll start vibrating, right? And that vibration gives off a particular frequency and sound. Okay. And for tuning forks, again, like a lot of times you use tuning forks to tune a piano and tune other instruments, right? Because mm -hmm. you want that particular key or string or you know part of the drum to to match that particular frequency so if i have the two in my hand and let's say we're going to pick on 528 hertz because that's what brad has in his hand two that we're going to get to in a minute if i have a tuning fork at 528 in one hand i have a tuning fork at 528 in the other hand if i hit the one and it starts vibrating the one that i did not hit will start to vibrate okay and again you don't have to believe me you can go you know try it out and and play with stuff but sympathetic resonance is a real thing when something is vibrating around other things will end up vibrating right so even you know my hand pan drum that you can see in the back there if you're looking at on youtube 
if I, if I speak really loud or if the dog barks, my drum will actually resonate, right? It will, it will send off a vibration because the vibration from me, from the dog bark ends up going to it as well. And so that's why when people are talking about like manifestation and attraction, well, like frequencies and vibrations like to be together. Okay. Um, one way that we can think about it is even from emotions, because, you know, that's an easy way for us to kind of think about in the 3D standpoint that the different emotions that we feel actually vibrate at particular Hertz frequencies as well. And there's lower vibration frequencies, fear, shame, guilt. Those things are, are vibrating at a much lower frequency uh, than something like, you know, joy, uh, gratitude. Those actually are, are vibrating at a much higher rate. And so that's why, you know, when, when two people come together and one person's feeling grateful and the other person's feeling shameful... Well, they're both vibrating at certain resonances, and eventually one of them is going to switch to match the other if you're together for very long. So is the person who's feeling gratitude going to help bring the person in shame up to gratitude, or is the person in gratitude going to bring the person, you know, going to come down to the shame level? And so that's a simple example, but everybody listening, you know exactly what we're talking about, right? When you when you go and you meet with people or you run into people, you can start to sense how they're vibrating or the frequency that they're giving off. And eventually, if you're with them for very long, you end up matching, right? We hope that we're raising people up, but it might be the other way around too. Right? And you've, I'm sure you've experienced it both ways. Um, so that's... That's how like two example or two people, just like the two tuning forks would be tuning to each other through sympathetic resonance because of their physical proximity to each other. Mm -hmm. And that's why for me, I can't be around certain people. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that's, that's why. Yeah. No, I'm not sorry. If they, they can choose to do what they want to do, but I can't be around it. And there are certain things that I do, things that I wear, practices that I do to protect myself from getting pulled into whatever this other person might be doing as well. Because I want to keep my tuning where it's at. I don't want to go match somebody who's not at the right frequency. But again, if I'm dealing with somebody whose frequency is higher than mine at the time, well, I'm going to do what I can to try to come up and match the frequency of that other person. Yeah. So, so there's a couple, this, couple of examples, you know. Yeah, now let's make this concrete for people. I think sound is the easiest way to, to think about this, right? Sound vibration, we kind of get that. Um, and with the tuning forks and making sure the instruments, like we did that in band, you know, like mm -hmm. the marching band, you'd, you'd, somebody would play an instrument and we'd all kind of tune so that all of the, I mean, essentially what you're doing is trying to line the wavelengths together. You know, because if you got multi wings that are not in sync and it sounds off, whatever. So we try to get it all in the same frequency, the same tuning, right? Whatever that might end up being. Same thing though, if you're at a concert, you know, especially if you're mm -hmm. in the front, if you're in the pit or whatever, and you get these huge subwoofers out there, right? There's these big speakers, and you get maybe get a bass guitar or, or a bass drum going roar, 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 and you can feel it in your body. You can feel the shaking. Like the vibrations in your body, the roar, 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 roar of the instruments coming. That's the same concept. You know, you're feeling the vibrations are being transferred and you're picking them up. Your body is actually picking up these vibrations and kind of matching, <laughs> matching the roar, 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 roar of the stuff coming out of the subwoofer, you know? And so, from a, like I said, a very practical standpoint, I think we've all experienced that. And then kind of taking the next level of your emotions. We've all been around people who we just, they're, you know, they're very, maybe they're very negative. They're very downing. Um, they're always pessimistic. And we go like, I, I just can't stand being around that person because every time I am, they're always so negative and it kind of pulls me down. Like mm -hmm. it just makes me feel bad. makes me kind of feel negative because they're negative. And so, like you said, Jason, you just to get to the point where you're like, I can't be around this person anymore. You know, you have to make that decision. You know, I can't do that, which is easy if it's someone that you can just avoid. The trick then comes what happens if it's a coworker? Mm -hmm. What happens if it's a, a spouse, a family member, a significant other? Yeah. You can't just say, 
I mean, well, I mean, sort of. You can, can but you, you, sure, you, you, can, you can. But, you know, it's a little more difficult and more complicated than just kind of saying, I'm not going to see this person any longer. Yeah. And, that, and that's where you really have to kind of work on yourself and strengthen yourself, right? So that you don't end up getting pulled into whatever might be going on with your coworker or your spouse or whatever else as well, right? That you can kind of maintain that that frequency level. And I think it's, you know, when we were, we were talking, I, th I think it was probably we were all in the last episode where we were talking about fear holding us back and about tuning ourselves to be able to commune or communicate with um, other beings, other things, you know, whatever, whatever terms you want to do, but you tune yourself, you're, you're able to connect and listen to various parts of the collective consciousness based on where you choose to tune yourself. And so again, there's that whole example of, you know, in the old days when I was a kid, you know, we actually had to turn a, di on a dial on the radio uh, to try to, to get, to get into the right frequency. Right. And so you'd kind of, you know, you have to mess with it a little bit. And sometimes even as you were driving down the road, uh, you know, you go a little ways and you'd have to kind of, you know, readjust it. And so it's the same way, you know, with us is if you want to commune with spirit, with the collective conscious, you need to be vibrating at a frequency level that matches that for them. Right. Because again, it's just like, and again, I'm not, I'm not making it like I'm this uber whatever person, but I can't be around certain people who are just living in shit and feels like they're going through the sewer and the poor me, poor me, poor me. Oh, woe is me, you know, shame, all that kind of stuff. I just can't stand to be around that. And so, you know, if we, if we think about it that way, if somebody who's living in that wants to communicate with me, they better clean themselves up or I'm not going to have anything to do with them. All right. So the same thing with, well, why am I not getting signs from the universe? Why am I not communicating with conscious or the spirit or God or whatever? Well, guess what? You got to clean yourself up. You know, if you want to talk to or commune with certain beings or the collective consciousness, you have to clean yourself up to be in, in proximity to that frequency and vibration to be able to hear and commune with that being that thing whatever it might be mm -hmm. yeah so let's let's talk about that how do we do that how do we get to those vibrations how do we clean ourselves you know to, to use that phrase um just to get rid of all the crap that you know we may say because i mean because a lot of these things we're talking about you know beings and things like that collective consciousness these are generally high frequency things Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're not going to be running down in the shame and the guilt levels of stuff like they're they're much higher. So what do we how do we how do we get ourselves so that we are up to get up to that level? Yeah, so I think, you know, the couple that I've used is managing my emotion and using actual sound frequency to do it. So meaning from, from an emotional standpoint is if I feel myself vibrating in an emotion that I would consider a lower vibration or a place I don't want to be, I do what I can to move myself to the emotion that I would like to be in. And, you know, as, as you move up the scale, you know, David Hawkins kind of came up with a, a, a scale of consciousness. It's actually pretty good to kind of think about in that way. Um, but, you know, to jump from shame to something like enlightenment is pretty hard to do, right? You can't go up 20 ladder steps in one step. Sometimes you can jump a couple, but you usually have to kind of go one at a time, right? And so it's the same thing as I've just kind of started to tune myself of knowing, especially if I'm deep down somewhere and I want to get back up to love or gratitude. Well, I know I got to get to like anger first, 
you know, if I'm feeling shameful, I've got to get angry about it first, move myself to anger, and then maybe I can jump to gratitude, right? But I, I, I limit the amount of time that I do that. I give myself just a very short period of time to make those leaps going forward. And that's why, you know, for me, the easiest thing is to move to a place of gratitude. That's, you know, things like enlightenment and, you know, either gratitude or love is where I tend to jump to because I know those are high vibrating frequencies, high vibrating emotions. And it's easy. It's easy for me to just look around and actually start feeling grateful for things around me and put some intention behind it to move there quicker, kind of from an emotional standpoint. Right. Um, the other one is to actually kind of imagine yourself and vibrating to particular sound frequencies, right? Which is kind of what Brad has there <laughs> as show and tell, right? So do you want to kind of explain that one? Because I know since you have the tool, you probably use it too, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So every, every morning as part of my um, kind of morning rituals, I know we talked about rituals a couple episodes ago, I think um, I, have a thing that I do. And one of the things that I do is I work to raise or have a high certain frequencies. Like you said, using sound waves is a really good way to do that uh, because we, we can, we can know what specific frequencies um, a, a musical instrument or something vibrates at. And then we can mention David Hawkins or whatnot. We can actually go and see, well, if I want to be in a certain frequency, emotional state let's say or want to be at a certain vibrational level what frequency does that have to be and then try to match ourselves to whatever the sound is that would get us there right um and so i've got this little thing here for those of you who are um watching on youtube again you get all the all the extras here so it's a little little tool here um it's called a love tuner and it is tuned to uh, the frequency of 528 hertz, which corresponds to the frequency of love. Hence love tuner, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there are many different things that are great about that frequency. Um, that frequency is used for healing. Um, obviously, it can be used for attracting love and that kind of stuff. Um, but what I use this for is just to kind of get myself into a higher um, you know, loving, positive kind of emotion first thing in the morning, right? Um, and so what this is, is it is essentially a little, it's a little musical instrument. You know, it's got a little case here. And uh, I don't know if it's going to come out because of my Zoom settings, but we'll see. Um, but basically, I just take it and I play it. I blow on it. So. Yeah, so you heard the the first part, but then the microphone suppression ends up thinking, off, oh, yes. no, it's, it's an outside noise. We can't do that. I didn't like it. Yeah. But so if you could hear it for that for a brief second, um, when I play it, the tune, the note that I play is at 528 hertz. So the idea is I play it in the morning and I let that go. And then I try to match myself to that vibration. Mm -hmm. You know, I internalize it. I try to, you know, once, even once I, you know, once I'm playing it, obviously my, my body is kind of vibrating with that. My lips are vibrating with that frequency as I'm playing it. And then even when I stop playing it, I still try to kind of visualize that. I try to keep that res, that frequency, that resonance going in my head. Um, and let it kind of, sometimes I'll close my eyes and just kind of sit still and quiet and just kind of let that go and try to focus on that 528 Hertz vibration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I do something similar with it, but I also um, will sometimes listen to what are called true tones, which are like that. A 528 true tone recording would be that specific frequency just played, you know, and when I listen to that through my headphones, and a lot of times what I will do is I'll actually hum along with it, right? So... If you're blowing the if you're blowing the love tuner, you can't do this. But if you're listening to it, you can actually go, oh. right. And by doing that, I'm feeling that vibration in my body, 
and then I can do uh, you know a couple of different things, right? I could I could imagine my whole body vibrating at that particular frequency, right? Which is one way that you can do it. You can uh, another one that you know most of these a lot of frequencies are associated with particular chakras, uh, and this is one again where don't necessarily believe what's out on the internet because it's not right. Um, but when I when I focus on 528, I see green, okay, and know it's associated with the heart chakra. So again, on the internet, you're not going to see that probably, but so you could also imagine your heart or heart chakra, right, being the color green, Imagine it being green and imagine it vibrating this green light at that particular frequency as well. And again, you don't even have to be listening to it. Once you once you start kind of learning these frequencies, you can actually, you know, do it without the device or use use something like the love tuner, like you would, you know, if you were in, in choir, right? Pitch pipe. A pitch pipe, you know, you do a pitch pipe. Okay, everybody, hmm, here's a starting note. Hmm, all right, everybody, let's go. Right? Right. And so you can use it as a as kind of a, a pitch tuner too. Yeah. So I'm sure the question on everybody's mind is, okay, Jason, that's great. Um, we know we can kind of keep ourselves vibrating or whatever. But what are the vibrations? What's the frequency that we need to hit to hit those beings and all that other fun stuff up there? Like, what do we need to do to hit all that? Like I'm sure that's that's everyone's everyone's mind right now is like, you know, because that's what, where do that's I need people... to where do I need to be to start? Well, exactly, it's gonna... yeah. Is it like 700 hertz? Like, what is it up there to get to those people? Like, what what are they vibrating at? You know. Well, what I will tell you is, um, there's no right or wrong answer to it, right? But if we go back to like the way David Hawkins talked about it, in the scale of consciousness that he kind of came up with. There's very, very low uh, frequency things like shame, I think was 20 or something like that on his scale. But on that scale, once you get to a point of 200, right, his his logarithmic scale kind of went from zero to a thousand. I think a thousand was enlightenment. Um, if you can get yourself above 200, then you're in the good space, right? And at that point... Um, I don't know, you know, we'll see what happens. It's not like you say, oh, okay, I want to communicate with mother Mary. So what frequency do I need to be on to contact mother Mary? No, but here's how you do. If you want to contact her or other beings, right? Get yourself into a state above 200 gratitude, love. Those are above 200. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you can get yourself feeling in that space and quiet and then call upon the being, there's a much greater chance that they will come to you at that point. If you are now placing awareness on them and if you are trying to commune and connect with them. Okay. Now, We'll just, we'll use a simple example. Everybody listening probably knows telepathy works, right? Because that's how we communicate. So sometimes I will do things like this. I will think of my friend Brad. And I will be in a state of feeling grateful or love for my friend Brad, who I do love and I am grateful for. And I'm going to sit there quietly in my quiet space, feeling love and gratitude. And I'm going to connect with Brad. I'm going to think of Brad. I'm going to visualize Brad. And I'm going to send things to Brad. Now, I can do it. And sometimes he's going to pick it up and sometimes he's not. And it doesn't matter whether he does or not, right? Depends if I'm busy, like what I'm doing. Like depends on if he's busy, but yeah. 
but you can actually telepathically communicate with people all over the world and all over the universes um, by using that kind of a uh, methodology, right? And again, each each one is going to be different. But you have to clean yourself. You have to come empty. You have to come in a way that you're willing to receive and you're willing to give. You're giving as well as receiving, right? And so, you know, and, and we can talk, we don't have enough time today, but we'll talk about this probably in another uh Another one is, you know, beings are going to be more willing to work with you and commune with you if you are serving them in Aini, right? And so um, I have certain statues or artifacts or other things that I have where I provide offerings to certain beings that I work with. Um, if I do that on a consistent basis, and if I'm thinking about them and I'm sending them love and gratitude and my thanks for what they're doing for me, and I'm doing that on a regular basis, when I call upon them or I ask for something, do you think they're going to be more likely to do it for me or less likely to do it for me? you know, if I've never done anything for them in the past. And it's the same way in, in the 3D, right? Mm -hmm. If you're, if you're doing things for the people you love, then when you want to talk to them or you need things from them, they're going to be much more willing to be there for you. Right. If it's some random stranger on the street, good luck. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> right. And so it's the same way here. So I don't know if that kind of answers the question. It's like, I haven't been given a blueprint on, mm. hey, you want to talk to Archangel Mike? I'm just throwing beings mm. out there that I know we can talk about, you know, publicly, but or that people know about. Um, and again, those are kind of from a Christian side, but a lot of people listening are probably from a Christian indoctrination background, right? But, you know, I, I I don't have a chart that says if you want to talk to Archangel Michael, you need to tune yourself to 741 hertz. And that because that's what he's vibrating on right now. No, I don't have that. <laughs> right. It would be handy if you did. It would be handy, right? Yeah. 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 But it would be wrong for me to sell that, too. Right. That's not necessarily I shouldn't be making money off of something uh, like that, per se. Right. But. I don't know, maybe I should. I don't know. But um, but I have been taught kind of that methodology like I just shared here is, you know, get yourself in the quiet space. Get yourself in the present moment. Get yourself feeling these emotions of love and gratitude. And once you get yourself there, then start connecting and communing. And, and again, at first it was kind of hard for me. But, you know, what does that mean exactly? Well, you kind of visualize, you know, in your mind, maybe you're staring at a statue or a picture of the being just trying to kind of imagine them. But um, the collective conscious works. And if you tap on people, uh, they will be there and they will answer and they will talk if you are in the right space. And if you're in a, in a space of Aini and Munai, with them they will be there um for you so i don't know did that answer yeah. did that answer brad no yeah no I, I, again <laughs> I, i'm just imagining people being like this is great like i can tune to certain things like that you know but if i want to tune to some of these beings and like that like what do i need to do to reach them mm -hmm. um you know because i think a lot of people who are listening i mean that's kind of kind of part of the goal is like hey we some of this is we do because we want to be able to reach out to collective consciousness or different things like that or potentially, you know, archangels or, or whatever like that. And so we want, you know, like if there's things that will help facilitate that, you know, yep. and it sounds like, you know, it's, it's not that we can say you need to be at, you know, 852.4 Hertz and that's going to hit so-and-so, but it's just getting you up as high as you can, mm -hmm. um, essentially. Um, and, you know, 
and keep on doing it and being consistent about it and doing it without um i looked up this last time without expectations yeah because that's what i was going to say is you got to you got to make sure that there that you don't have the expectations around it too on what it's going to look like or what it's going to be mm-hmm. right because again most of the time when i'm doing this i'm sending out information right sometimes i receive back immediately sometimes it's two weeks a month a year later right but it's it 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 all kind of you know uh it's not like making a phone call (laughs) (laughs) it is but it isn't right it's like Mm -hmm. okay i'm thinking of brad so i'm going to pick up my phone i'm going to dial his number and i'm going to hit send and so i'm thinking about brad and i'm sitting here and it goes to voicemail right because brad's busy right now well okay so hey brad uh i got a question about this can you help me get back to me when you can i hang up brad he's been very busy maybe he's offline he's in the mountains somewhere and he doesn't have any cell phone reception well when brad gets back to cell phone reception he's probably going to get my voicemail and he's going to look at it and go oh i got an answer for jason Maybe he texts it back to me. Maybe he calls me on the phone. Maybe he sends me a letter, right? He could choose how how and in what form he's going to respond to me and when he's going to respond to me, right, based on what's best for me. No expectations. I know Brad. He's my friend. We love each other, right? He's he's not going to totally blow me off. But I can't have expectations about. I mean, again, imagine, imagine if I leave a voicemail like this. Oh my gosh, man! I'm like so over my head, man. I, I'm, I'm about to die here. You gotta call me back in the next minute, or, 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 or things are just gonna go. Ugh. I'm pretty sure I've had that client actually. You've had clients like that before, yeah. right? But you see the difference in the energy of that mm-hmm. versus, hey, Brad, I was just thinking about you. I had a question about this and I thought you'd probably know what the answer was. So, you know, get back. It's no rush. Get back to me when when you can. I really appreciate you. You know, hope you're doing well. Yeah. See the difference between those two? Oh, and, right? I, and I feel that when I have two clients come that way, when clients are kind of like, I need you to call me back right away. My first response, first thought is, no, no, I don't. You're actually going to go to the end of the line now and you're going to wait to the people who are more polite about it. And we're like, Hey, got a question, you know, let me know when you get a chance. Like those, are the people are going to go more to the top of my list because they didn't have the expectation. They weren't th- have that demand of you need to do right away um, for it. So, I mean, same thing, you know, as above, so below. Yeah. And think about, you know, the way most people pray or are taught to pray sounds like the i'm in crisis mode and god i need your help right now Mm. well tough shit you know a lot of times because again you usually you know again not not saying this happens but you know just like brad explained those needy people that are like pulling on people usually get put to the end of the line because you're not in the vibratory sequence that you need to be to be communicating with that person right and if you've been giving Aini, if you've been showing love if you've been sending love to these beings most of the time i mean i again i don't i don't know what the right ratio is but i i do things every day to send love and gratitude to certain beings and i don't ask for anything i'm just sending the love and the gratitude to them i'm not asking for anything Maybe once out of 10 or 20 times do I ask for something, right? Because I want to build up that emotional bank account, if you will. That's a term that we use a lot of times in leadership and in relationships. You build up the relational uh, uh, bank account because at some point you're going to need some help probably, right? But if you're only coming to these beings asking for something instead of giving and offering something, then hey you know how do you how do you feel when people do that to you and so that's why again some of these different rituals if you will of lighting candles burning incense sending thoughts some of the other things that i'm sure we'll talk about more in the future too 
are ways of showing that I need to these beings. One word that you use, and I was going to make sure we clarify what it means, is you talked about that you have to come clean. You have to be clean. What do you mean by that? So imagine again, if I, <clears throat> if I'm playing my guitar, right? I've tuned my guitar, but it got, it was laying in the mud. So it's caked in mud. Even though the strings might be tuned, how well do you think that guitar is going to sound? Not very good. Like mud. <laughs> like mud, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's gonna the 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 resonance in the in the music chamber is not gonna be there. So not only do we have to tune ourselves, but we have to clean ourselves as well, right? So you know, if you're holding on to things that you no longer need to hold on to, if you're allowing yourself to become contaminated right by other people around you or the energy that people are shooting at you right then you're not clean you're coming in like you haven't taken a shower and this is probably you know future episode because we don't have enough time to get into all this today but that's where some of the rituals are about too mm -hmm. is helping you to cleanse yourself uh energetically spiritually physically and again, even some of the physical things that we do are, are doing things energetically to be able to help you do that. Whether you're washing your hands, whether you're smudging yourself with, you know, sage, whether you're using lotions or oils or different things like that as well. Those are all some ways to, to clean ourselves, but we also have to clean our minds, right? And cleaning your minds is part of that being in the present moment right if if you're trying to commune with a being and at the same time you're trying to like do your taxes in your head <laughs> it ain't gonna work right because <laughs> it, it usually comes in i was always taught you know the spirit talks in a still small voice well you got to be clean in your mind in your body in your energy field if you want to be able to receive those things Mm -hmm. come clean come clean you know and and again think of think about if you were you know in the old days you know i, I don't want to say like if you're going to see the president of the united states now because that doesn't even mean as much as it used to but you know imagine if you had audience with a king or a queen wouldn't you probably take a shower and put on a nice pair of clothes before you go and visit with the king and queen it's kind of the same idea here. Get rid of your 3D bullshit. Take your shower. You know, put on your clean clothes. Get your get your headspace right before you go in and, and try to commune uh, here. That makes a lot of sense. Yep. So... And that's probably a lot for people <laughs> this episode. So we'll dig into more of that stuff in the future. But yeah, you got to tune yourself. You got you got to clean yourself. You got to tune yourself. Uh, and there's different ways to do that. We've given you some different ideas here. But even I'll, I'll tell you too, because sometimes people are are overly concerned with the cleaning. OCD people. But, OCD people, right? But but the fact that, like, if you're using your love tuner, mm -hmm. the fact that you're feeling that frequency is actually cleaning you as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's it's almost like um, you can use sound frequency vibrations to clean things, right? Or just like sandblasting and other things like that, right? So the more that you're actually feeling those frequencies the more you're actually cleaning yourself and burning out the junk that's there too. So that's another reason for trying to be in those spaces and doing some of those practices, because you don't even have to know how you're doing it. You know, like when you cut your finger, you, you, you don't have to sit there and think about it healing itself. But if, mm -hmm. if you just allow it to be, and you do the minimum stuff that you need to do, it'll take care of itself. 
And that's a lot of times how the cleaning ends up happening too. It's a byproduct of a lot of the stuff that we're doing anyway. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So don't worry too much about it, but stay clean. Stay clean. Take take a shower. Yeah. And if you if you it. if you feel dirty, then do something about it. And tune into a future episode, and maybe we'll talk more about the things that you can do to facilitate that. Or, I know, heck, maybe we've already talked about it to some extent. I don't know. Anyway, go back through every episode we've done up to this point. I'm, we're in the 50s, I think, now. So make sure you read all, listen to all of those episodes. And if we haven't gotten to it yet, probably by the time you've gone through all 50 or so, we'll hit, we'll, we'll be ready to hit that one. So just, just <laughs> listen. You'll, you'll hear it all. Everything yep. you need to know right here. Yep. So. Yeah, because we have talked about a lot of these things, maybe indirectly. Yeah. For those who were listening before. And we re mentioned some of them even in today's episode, too. Yeah. It's all connected. Everything is, you know. Yep. So cool. All right. Well, with that, uh, I want to thank you guys for listening. Like I said, listen to the other 50 some odd episodes we have and you know, kind of get caught up here. I uh, appreciate you guys uh, listening. Hope you stay clean. Um, Jason and I are always ready to receive uh, anything you've got for us and we'll return the love back to you as well. So um, have a great rest of your week and we will catch you in the next episode. All right. See you everybody.